All right, for our next assignment, if we go under unit modules, see where we are in the class. We're going to scroll down past the midterm critique, which we just finished, to unit 11. So a spot illustration, that is the goal. And it's really the bread and butter of a lot of digital artists. Spot illustrations can be used editorially. They can be used for things like t-shirts, for things like posters, album covers. Uh, spot illustrations traditionally go inside books. So if we look at like Harry Potter spot illustrations, these start each chapter. And because the book is printed in black and white, the spot illustrations are in black and white, but there are a lot of them. But notice how they're all formatted. They are called spot illustrations because the artist has no idea how the designer is going to use them in the book. They might use them to fill a page of the book. They might use them at the top of the page, at the bottom of the page, in the corner. So they need to work and be self-contained no matter what context they're put on. In that same way, they're a lot like sticker design. So you can think of your spot illustration for this assignment like a sticker, where it needs to be free-floating and can look good on any surface. Like these. Not only can they look good on any surface, they might look good turned to the side angled differently, even turned upside down. Something else that's like this is tattoo design. And tattoo artists, many of which I went to art school with, they create what are called uh, flash sheets or flash pages of flash art. This is how they kind of show off their custom designs. Whether they're like this one, interpretations of classic designs from the 30s, or whether they're, they're contemporary examples. So flash art like this, each of these is a tattoo you can get permanently etched onto your body, but you'll notice how strongly they're based on line art and then colored behind. And that's exactly what we're going to do with this digital spot illustration. Here's a classic one from the 30s. So what do you want to avoid in your designs? You want to avoid anything that's cropped off arbitrarily, right? You want it to be free floating. Think of the overall shape it takes. Like look how beautiful that snake is. I love old flash art. Just the shapes involved, right? You want it to make an interesting shape. If you're doing something like a portrait, but you don't want to show the whole body, look at how these the, the side view of the woman's head, it uses the flower to create an interesting shape at the bottom, so it's not just cut off at a horizontal. With Jesus here, they use the collar of his robe to create that bottom edge. The little tails on the aviator's helmet here to commemorate a dead pilot. So you can even do little things like this with this Amelia Earhart one of with the coloring, your line art will stop, but your coloring will continue and kind of fade out. So you want to think of it as a free floating shape. We are not going to include text. So you see how this one says world famous tattoos. That has the image, the spot illustration with text. Like this one, all these banners. Banners are a traditional way to do it with tattoos. Or this one with the unlucky 13 in the skull. So try to avoid using any letters or numbers with your spot illustration for this project, even though its theme is based on the phrase, suffer no fools. Because in the next assignment, we're going to be designing that phrase as a typographic solution to go with our spot illustrations to be a poster. And that will make sense as we experiment with it. Okay. So let's go to unit. 11, we'll see some past student examples right at the head there. I include these very intentionally because spot illustrations are really the first project that really gets to showcase your personality fully. So this student really likes werewolves, decided to do a little werewolf character. So they sketched in colored pencil. They did their first sketch in blue pencil. 
and then they wanted more details like something on the t-shirt they gave him some facial hair some some jewelry some longer fingernails treads on the bottom of the shoes all of those were, were details added in with red colored pencil this is to show you the difference between spot illustrations and logos logos are minimized have to be simple black solid shapes that are scalable and recognizable spot illustrations can be as detailed as you like right you want them to be context free of any specific context so they can work as a sticker anywhere but they don't need to be like the size of a business card you know they can be bigger and more complicated once you have the sketch which is the first thing we need that one was done in colored pencil this one is just done in in regular pencil and then they were photographed and then brought into the computer and then on top of them clean what's called digital inking was done and this is really thick digital inking with the octopus for the werewolf boy really thin digital inking and then this one in the middle is kind of halfway in between once we do clean digital inking then we can in photo p color behind it and this is what's called flat color with the werewolf that's the simplest form of digital coloring where each thing like this the fur color of the werewolf is one color the shirt color is another color the pants color is another color but it's just one flat color like an old comic strip or we can do what are called duotone colors this is duotone soft edge where you have gradations of that color highlights and shadows this is called duotone hard edge or cut edge which looks a little bit more like animation we're going to be learning about all those options and the end result will be like these free floating full color spot illustrations based on line art oh one last thing if you notice the octopus here the black line art that was nicely cleanly digitally inked is still there in the final but it's been turned to dark blue so you'll also have the option to change your your line art your ink into a color as well that's one of the advantages of digital inking okay i know you guys are excited to get going so we have these examples you can see them a little bit closer now what we're going to be learning today is how to make your sketch into clean line art and that's the goal for next class to have clean line art to start so that next class we can just be coloring there's a few ways to do it you can do it as a vector or you can do it as a raster image but either way it has to be clean and has the potential for high resolution so we'll be looking at different ways there are some students that choose to draw it by hand and also to ink it by hand and then scan the inks in and then clean that up in photo p and use that as their digital inking and that will be an option as well so here is the actual assignment page for assignment five just because you're doing line art it doesn't matter what kind of style you want that line art to have if you want it to be photorealistic you might use a technique like hatching that's shown here or stippling which is lots of discrete little black dots to create tones or you might try to contain it with solid shapes which is what i'm going to do more like kind of graphic outlines we're going to learn how to do all of that once we have the sketch we make clean line art and then once we have clean line art starting next class we can color behind it so here's a really great example this is from a uh, a site called behance this is by david sasella who does t-shirt designs and this is the kind of professional gold standard of how you would do this project so it's not about the style of it the colors of it anything it's about thinking it through and then making it the highest quality at each step so this is the end product it's a a silk screen vector that goes on t-shirts that uses one two three four five six seven eight inks so this is a pretty expensive you know silk screen printed t-shirt and it goes on it to a dark gray t-shirt or kind of a navy heather t-shirt some details this uses what's called a cut edge or hard edge duotone so you notice the beak is a color but that color has been shifted into highlights and shadows 
And then there's even some reflected light with the pink. Each scale has reflected light and a highlight and a shadow. So this would actually be called full spectrum duotone hard edge coloring. Sometimes he uses white for the line art. Sometimes he uses black. So there's a lot going on. This is just the clean line art. And then this is the gold standard to actually make that line art as a vector, just like we did for our logo. So here it is in outline mode where you can see all the anchor points that create this vector. Then once you have the vector line art, you can add the digital color behind. But he started with what I'm asking you guys to do, which is just to sketch the idea. And sketching the idea, he just does it with a pencil sketch. And sometimes he use multiple pieces of paper and then like tape them together and then scan them in to Photoshop and then kind of clean them up there. So this was his finished sketch, refined sketch that then he traced his vector over. So what do we call it when you have a sketch, whether it's really loose or really, really detailed like this, and then it's turned into this? We call that digital inking, whether it's done as a vector or whether it's done as a high resolution raster. Why do I mention Behance? Well, if you look at our course outline for today, it might scare you a little bit. And remember, we got to read our course outline every night before bed, just like memorizing Bible verses. But I know we're not always so attentive. So if we look at the course outline for today, for March 27th, I know I'm always asking a lot of you, but this is the first day where you can sign up for who you want to do your individual presentation on. And so I'm going to briefly show you where you can look up that information and where you can sign up. And Behance.net, which is Adobe's portfolio site, is a really good place to search for artists and search for types of digital art you might be interested in presenting. So we start the presentations on April 12th. So you have some time but no one is allowed to present on the same artist. So it's, it's good to make your preference known. And then if you change your mind, you can always change it, but you just can't choose anyone that someone else is already presenting on. So if we go to our homepage and we go down to unit modules again, and we skip forward to unit 13, we're on unit 11 now, that's everything to do with your individual presentations. It will give you past student examples of them, and you want to research a contemporary digital artist. So contemporary means that they're in our times. They are living right now and working. And to me, the more contemporary, the better. Because digital technology is always changing. The kinds of artwork that are being made are always changing. And then you're going to make a Google Slides or a PowerPoint presentation. So here we have a student example of one in Google Slides. And notice that this presentation is not on a type of digital art. It's on one artist and their process, their biography, and then at least seven of their artworks that you think show a diversity of what they do. With each image you include, you need information that goes with that image, right? So that we're not looking at stuff blind. And I like this, and I chose it as the past student example with the student's permission because it includes a lot of process images as well. You are required to talk about their process, what programs they use, how they make their work. It's just a bonus if you can find images that show that process. And Behance can help with that. And then extras like videos that show that process, that's very helpful too. So this is an artist that mostly does digital painting. That will be two assignments from now that we're learning how to do this stuff. They use Procreate to do it, which is a tablet-based program like Photoshop. And they kind of talk through their color choices, their brush choices, all of that. And then another extra they have, which I really like and would love to see in your presentation if possible, is an interview with the artist, as well as their social media. But the interview is incredibly helpful because that means you're not guessing how they make their work. That means you can read about what they say about how they make their work. But the problem with a lot of these interviews and just kind of feature articles on digital artists that you might find interesting is you'll notice they'll give a lot of art, but they don't give any information about these artworks. And so that's the problem with relying on, on third party sources. So instead, what I recommend is you go to this site, 
which is linked in the assignment for this artist, 